look, it's not really that hard to do this. Okay. It really just takes a lot of financial discipline and communication with you and your spouse or your significant other. Okay. Welcome back to the green logbook. So as promised, I'm going to lay out exactly what you need to do if you're looking to retire with a good chunk of change in your pocket. And when I say a good chunk of change, I'm talking about several hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially even half a million dollars. So a little background on this, right around the 15 year mark, my 15 year mark, I sat down with my wife. I let her know that I had intentions of retiring at 20 years in the next five years, right? I never really had plans to go past 20 years. 20 years was always the goal. I never really wanted to go to 25 or 30 or anything like that. I wanted to do my 20, say I did it, cut out, start the second chapter of my life. And she was on board with that. But we needed to come up with a plan because up until then, our savings were kind of all over the place, right? We were just kind of spending, not knowing what's happening, what's going to happen. And at 15 years, when I kind of broke it down to her, it got kind of real, right? It, like the reality hit us in the face. Like, man, we really need to figure something else out because what we're doing is not really working for us. Again, we were just saving here and there a little bit. So we communicated. We laid out all our finances. We looked at what I was making. I was probably a chief warrant officer or two at the time. And we were looking at what she was making. And she was a GS employee at the time. And she still is a GS employee. We came to the consensus that we could essentially live off of her pay alone because our BAH was covered. So we had rent covered. Um, we had our insurance, medical, dental, that was all covered. Really, we had no other worries, right? All we had to worry about was our salaries and, I don't know, things for school, back to school and travel here and there, you know, whatever, filling up the gas tank, paying insurance, phone bills, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because living on base housing, all of our utilities were also covered. So we really had no other worries. And we said, okay, we can live off of your pay. My pay will go into savings. We'll go into investing in TSP. A portion of her savings also went into TSP. But I was maxing out my TSP at the time. Now, I'm going to get into this little presentation here. It's it's pretty nice. So just, just bear with me here. It's called the Green Log Books. Retirement prep, saving for the second chapter. You're going to like this. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Check it out. Right off the bat, I want to say that this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Um, I actually dislike math unless it's my own income and doing calculations with my own stuff. That, then I like it. But I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not certified to give any kind of financial advice. The examples I'm going to give you do not account for the BAH and the COLA like we just talked about or the taxes. All right. So let's say the military service member, let's say you're the military service member and your salary is $7,000 per month. Again, I'm just throwing out this number here. This is not accurate or anything like that. That's $84,000 annually. Okay. Let's say your spouse, their salary is $5,000 per month or $60,000 annually. Again, this all depends on where you live, right? If you live in a high priced area, this may not work for you. Um, you. You may have to make some compromises here and there, but for the most part, uh, this is what worked for us. And the goal, let's just say the goal is to save about $400,000 before you retire. Okay, so you're, you're at your 15 year mark. Year one, the military service member, you save $84,000. Your spouse, brings to the table $60,000 from her salary and you decide to live off of $60,000 for your family of three or four or five or whatever you've got. Your total in the first year is $84,000. Let's move on to year number two. The military service member, again, brings $84,000 to the table. Okay, the previous balance was another $84,000 from last year. Your total this year at the end of year two is $168,000, okay? Pretty easy. And we're not even putting the spouse's information up there anymore because we've already established that we're living off the $60,000. Let's move on to year three. 
year three, the military service member brings on another $84,000. And again, these numbers are not accurate at all. This is just a number I'm throwing out there. It doesn't count for COLA increases or BAH increases or, you know, your promotion or salary increases after every two years like military you normally gets. All right. Your previous balance was $168,000. So at the end of year three, you have a total of $252,000. Let's move on to year four. All right. Again, you're saving $84,000. Your previous balance was $252,000. At the end of year four, you've got $336,000. Okay. Now let's move on to last year, your 20th year. You're about to retire what do you got? Okay. You bring in another 84,000. You're going strong. Your previous balance was 336,000. You're really looking at that next house you want to buy. You want to move in somewhere nice, maybe your forever home. And your total at the end of five years is $420,000. That's a nice chunk of change for five years of just grinding and, and, and putting that money into savings. So let's move on here. So just to give you an example Year one, $84,000. Year two, it moved up to $168,000. Year three, you're at $252,000. Year four, $336,000. And year five, a grand total of $420,000. Look, it's not really that hard to do this, okay? It really just takes a lot of financial discipline and communication with you and your spouse or your significant other. I don't know that I would advise doing this with somebody that you're not married to because things could happen. People want to go their separate ways and the money you combined, who knows what could happen to it. I mean, it could happen in marriage too, right? If, if something goes awry, but for the most part, if you've, if you've got a strong relationship, if you've got a lot of communication, if you've got the financial discipline to go forward with this, there's a potential that you could walk away from the military with a good amount of money just shy of half a million dollars. You may make more money, you may make less money, so your numbers may differ, but at the end of the day, as long as you're saving and investing, right, because a lot of times the interest adds up as well, as long as you're saving and investing, you cannot go wrong. You're going to leave the military with a good chunk of change. So hopefully that kind of opened your eyes a little bit to the power of communication, the power of saving, the power of investing, the power of just putting your money away because you know that you want to start the second chapter of your life in a good way. And another great thing would be to like and subscribe to this channel right now. Do it. Do it now. Thanks for watching.